Here's the little baby that is sick. The baby has been sick since birth. We're living in a country whereby if your child is sick, you have to pay to treat your child. If, you're, if you don't have the money, there's a great chance that your child is going to die. How would you feel if your child is sick but you cannot afford to send your child to the hospital? We all got to make a difference, man. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> It's unfortunate that at this point, well, we have to lose this baby. We don't have a welfare system in Nigeria. People are suffering. People are not. People, people. Really, I, I, I came back from Nigeria not long ago and I was actually literally in tears. Nigeria has more resources. Nigeria had more promises. Nigeria had more prophecies. Nigeria had more religion. Nigeria had more prayer. Nigeria had more opportunity. So on that premise, I could say that we have not been moving fast enough. Nigeria is a country that I find absolutely fascinating and so over the years I've worked with loads of people that uh, are from Nigeria or involved in things in Nigeria and I found the nation fascinating to uh, explore, to research, to learn about, uh, to get myself acquainted with and uh, in my research I found that Nigeria is a nation that's trying to lift itself out of a terrible situation and in my research one of the people that I came across was a name kept cropping up, the name Sunday Adelijah. I'd met Sunday Adelijah um, about a year or two ago and I found his work and his way of thinking fascinating. Uh, when I returned back to the, uh, to the UK, he's actually from Ukraine, when I returned back to the UK I discovered that he planned to relocate back to Nigeria. He's originally from Nigeria and he's been in Ukraine for 30 years and he's planning to relocate there to uh, cause and bring about national transformation within the next five to ten years. A major huge project, a huge undertaking. Now I was fascinated with what he was trying to do and I thought to myself this would make an interesting documentary and people would be interested to know uh, what he's trying to achieve, what he's trying to do and when I explored and researched the work he was trying to do, it, it was such a humongous project and he had put so much research into it, so much effort, so much thinking into it and if there's anybody that could do this, he is the man. If there's anybody who's got a track record like him, then that person can do the task that he's trying to do in Nigeria. Now to a lot of people it seems that you know what he's, a tr he's trying to do is just unattainable he's just in a dreamland and there's no way that he can do this but let me tell you he knows what he's doing he has done it before he has had amazing results in Ukraine and he has been equipped over the last 30 years to be able to bring the changes that are necessary in Nigeria so what I want to do is I want to speak to him, I want to ask him questions, I want to go and meet him and talk with him and just dig into his mind to understand how he's going to do uh, what he wants to do, how he's going to achieve it, how he's going to bring the results. I mean I know some of it but I think I want to delve a little bit deeper and hear it directly from his mouth and I believe that this is going to be a, an amazing time for Nigeria. The next 5, 10, 15 years is going to be transforming for Nigeria if he gets involved and he begins to do what he said he's going to do. It was as the representative of Her Majesty the Queen that Princess Alexandra of Kent returned in the evening. She was about to hand over Nigeria's constitution. She was to wish Nigeria a great and noble future. This was the moment for which the country's leaders, in partnership with British authority, had patiently worked. In handing over the documents to the Federal Prime Minister, Her Royal Highness handed over sovereignty to a new nation. This was the dramatic takeover by the new nation's own green and white flag. This was the first session of the first parliament of the new Nigeria. Nigeria secured her independence on October the 1st, 1960. 
Nigerians who witnessed it looked forward to the building of a great nation. They dreamt of a Nigeria that would make a mark in the history of our world. How did the giant of Africa that seemed so promising at independence come to be so unstable? More than 50 years after independence, things really haven't changed that much. Rather, they have become worse. Most Nigerians would agree that the Nigerian project of the past 55 years has failed. Nigeria has become known as a country of failed leadership and many have been left wondering how the giant of Africa came to be in the quagmire it is trapped in. There are many that are optimistic that Nigeria is about to come out of the wilderness of leadership failure. That era of leadership failure may now be coming to an end with a new generation searching for lasting solutions to the quest for a prosperous and a just society. So what I've discovered is that there is an army of people around the world who are passionate about doing something in Nigeria and bringing transformation. Young people taking part in charitable projects, educational projects, political projects, and they're rising up to bring change in Nigeria. So I want to show you somebody that's doing an amazing work there in Nigeria. Dion Osage, another day in Benin City, Nigeria. I cannot keep quiet to continue to watch my people suffer because of the greed of a few people. It's wrong. I grew up in this area, in this world. Look at what people have to deal with just to have access to their homes. Eh? Come, follow me. So, there's been many initiatives um, mm -hmm. and uh, programs implemented in Nigeria and still they failed and there's still corruption in Nigeria. Why is this? Nigeria. The ones that have failed, um, I, I, need example. I need example. For instance, let's think of um, the fight against corruption. Why, why has that failed? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it, it, it... Nigeria is on a journey. That's what we all should always remember that Nigeria is on a journey. Um, some will say the journey is slow. Some will say we are on the right pace. I don't know if there is a measurement or yardstick for us to know how fast we should. But if you want, I, I measure Nigeria and say Nigeria is slow on progress. There are progress being made. And I would say that it is slow. I wouldn't say it's failed. It is just slow. Um, the last time I checked, um, uh, the, the, the Forbes, uh, t uh, the most corrupt countries in the world. Nigeria wasn't even in, in the list of the ten, top ten corrupt countries. Okay. Whereas three years ago it would have, many many years ago it would have been. So there are there are significant changes, really good improvement, but it is slow. You know, I'm going to ask for near year. Then no, no, I suppose the vest pass. No, no vest. Okay. The this bricks, this brick is to protect water yeah. from coming to the home. Yeah. Eh? People live here. Now they're ashamed. You tell yourself a leader. And for the things that do not succeed in Nigeria, I like, <laughs> I like to want to believe that too much bottlenecks in Nigeria. And gradually we're breaking off these bottlenecks. Um, gradually. Well, I wouldn't want to be a pessimist, but it is very clear that if we continue this way, it is going to get worse. The system of governance we are presently practicing isn't working. Just take a look at the power sector. The federal government has no business in generating power. The solutions are there, but they just turn away from it simply because they want to control everything. It's a real shame. I don't want to be a pessimist, like I said earlier, but if we continue this same federal structure, then I see no light at the end of the tunnel. Truth must be told, I see no hope for this country. The condition in Nigeria is pathetic. There is high unemployment rate. Poverty level is alarming. Crime rate is on the increase and there are no basic amenities. The basic amenities in the developed countries are seen as luxuries over here. So most prefer to live abroad even if it's just to enjoy these basic amenities. To me, I think that is why most people run abroad. They just want to grab a taste of these basic amenities and just live a normal average life. One of the reasons would be um, uh, the, the rate of development in, in Nigeria. And when I mean development, I mean mainly to do with both economically, um, socially, and um, uh, in terms of academics as well, and education. 
So that would be a contributory factor to the reason why, for reason why we have still have corruption in, in Nigeria. I mean, I'll say to you a lot of things are actually going on well in Nigeria. But I would also agree with you that there are so many things that you would think that why should this fail? It's only common sense. Come on. <laughs> but then there are so many bottlenecks in Nigeria that um, stifle progress. There are many also, um, I would like call it, personal interests um, from stakeholders of the nations that impede, you know, the success or the growth or seeing a project to the end. So, so just, just are the factors that I'll say, but I'd like to, to just believe more that more things succeed in Nigeria than are that fails. So that's my perspective. The, the government authorities in Nigeria have to take more responsibility. I think that is very, very important. Um, again, I want to commend the current government. That they, are, they, are, they are doing a lot of work in terms of battling and combating uh, corruption uh, and, and crime in Nigeria. But even that, there are still question marks around their policies. People are asking how transparent those policies are, how fair they are, and how honest they are actually fighting corruption. And there are still questions about whether it's politically, some of the fight against corruption, whether it's politically motivated, or whether they are in fact doing that for the benefit of the country. You have a chemist in this area. Are you aware, as a pharmacist, are you aware that this kind of thing comes from malaria? Very sure, very sure, I'm aware, very sure. But you, are, you live in this place or you have a business here? What have you done to call for the state government to do this road? Since this road, look at, look at your front, bro. We are going to make a movement. When I'm ready, I'll call on you. My name is Diono Saige, bro. Eh? Respect. It's, it's wrong now. Uh, and of course, we also have this corruption amongst uh, church leaders, um, religious leaders in, in Nigeria. If, if we can reach them um, with a the, with the, with the fight against corruption and, 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 and help make them champions of this fight, it will hugely benefit Nigeria because Nigeria is a very religious country. So being religious does not always have a direct positive implication to a country's development. So it's just like a minister out there trying to enrich himself, uh, uh, taken away from his parishioners just to enrich himself, um, uh, uh, playing on the vulnerability of, of ordinary poor Nigerians. Uh, just enrich themselves without any real uh, evidence of how they are using that finance in contributing to the, to the community. So this is annoying. Mm. I, I don't know how much Sunday knows uh, Nigeria politics and Nigeria how it works. I don't know when he left Nigeria, but but surely he is um, a man who has achieved quite a lot in in Ukraine. Um, 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 but we must all recognize that Ukraine culturally and in many ways is different to Nigeria. The problem that we face in Nigeria is different from the problem Ukraine has faced. I think uh, my advice to Sunday would be to, you know, I don't know how much homework he's done, to do his homework very well and please do bring up a well thought through plan that we that will benefit uh, Nigeria. Um, I, I don't know of Sunday personally, uh, but having heard about him, read a little bit about him, um, I, 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 as, a, as a minister of an established, as established church of England and of Nigeria, uh, I do also have a question mark around Sunday, I'll be honest. He's a lovely man, but I do have question mark. And, and, and this is me echoing the concerns like the Orthodox Church in Ukraine have, the concerns so many people have around him. Um, I think I want to echo that as well. Um, that that is something that one cannot ignore. I think it's, it's a fair criticism, and, and if you are going to change Nigeria, you want to be coming from a platform that that is present us with something unique and something that we can actually trust. There are also lots of lots of big ministers, well-known pastors in Nigeria. And I can name quite a lot of them. I mean, you know, Ayakilomi. Uh, 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 we have uh, Yodepo. We have um, uh, Redima. Um, Gospel Church, my Church, Oyedepo, Adebo. So we have quite a lot of them. I mean, my challenge to Sunday will be if these guys haven't changed Nigeria, I, I'll be looking forward to what Sunday would do. Um, yes, there is no, of course, we want to see what Sunday can achieve in terms of 
creating millionaires. Um, if he's done that in Ukraine, please, when, when, don't wait anymore. Come uh, to Nigeria and help lots of people in Nigeria who, who, needs, who, needs, who needs help. So we don't have a welfare system in Nigeria. People are suffering. People are... People, people, Really, I, I, I came back from Nigeria not long ago, and I was actually literally in tears because people don't have ways of being assisted. These are people who have great ideas. There are governments that have many ways, too many things to do. Agriculture, for instance, is dying because nobody is investing in it. So if Dotson is coming to Nigeria with, with an NGO right here as a, um, a charity organization and he wants to do all these things, wow, please come and implement that. In Nigeria, we need welfare system in Nigeria. We need projects such as the ones that he wants to implement in Nigeria to help the country going moving forward. I think that will be a massive, massive achievement if, if he can be able to pull that up. And I'll be very much happy to support it as well. Sunday Adelijah is the founder and senior pastor of the Embassy of God in Kiev, Ukraine. By age 33, he had built the largest charismatic church in Europe having started with only a few followers in a small apartment in downtown Kiev in 1994. He was born in a small village in Nigeria and became a Christian in March 1986, just before graduating from high school. After graduation, Ad Elijah left Nigeria after he received a scholarship to study journalism at the Belarusian State University in the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. He is the author of more than 300 books which have been translated into numerous languages. Sunday speaks, preaches and teaches fluently in Russian. His church has been instrumental in starting over 300 rehab centers for drug addicts and alcoholics situated all over Ukraine and Russia. Through the Love Rehabilitation Center, many thousands of drug addicts and alcoholics have been set free from their addictions. Thousands are fed daily at the church's soup kitchen in Kiev. The church also has a program for helping homeless people acquiring skills, thus helping them back into normal life and work. His work has been widely reported by world media outlets like the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, New York Times, Associated Press, Reuters, CNN, BBC and numerous other media outlets. Pastor Sunday has had the opportunity to speak on a number of occasions in the United Nations. He had the rare privilege of opening the United States Senate with prayers. He has spoken in the Israeli Knesset and the Japanese Parliament along with addressing governments in several other countries. Sunday has also met with numerous celebrities and world leaders and is known globally for his transforming work that has impacted nations. He is known as an expert in national transformation. However, having lived outside of Nigeria for over 30 years, working with politicians, countries and governments, as well as being a student and expert in nation building and national transformation, his mentality has been greatly altered. He is convinced his years of experience can play a significant role in birthing a new Nigeria. Can he make a significant impact on Nigeria? For the sake of his country of birth, Sundar Elijah has decided to relocate from Europe to Nigeria to join the efforts of Nigerians to create a better future for Nigeria and indeed Africa. It is his plan to do something for every state by establishing concrete and tangible solutions. His primary concern is to bring improvements to the living standards and well-being of Nigerians so that they can in turn assist their fellow Africans by alleviating their suffering. But these have not always been his ambitions. Before, I was not thinking of Nigeria at all. Okay. I was thinking that I was never going to have anything to do with Nigeria. Hmm. I thought that that was just my place of birth wow. and that uh, I would only be going there to visit my relatives and never to do anything, not ever to have anything more to do with Nigeria. Hmm. I'm comfortable where I am. Hmm. I thought I was comfortable. I'm comfortable in Europe yeah. and, uh, you know, I could go from Europe to any other continent in the world. Hmm. I would be, you know, welcome in Australia, in America, in Latin America, yeah. any continent, yeah. in Asia. So, uh, so I never even considered that I would have anything to do with Nigeria.
One of the things you mentioned before is that in your church here in Ukraine, you have seen quite a lot of success with uh, helping uh, drug addicts and alcoholics, and then you've also empowered them to go back out and to replicate what's happened to them in others. And how, how has that been significant for you here? And what, how is that significant in what you plan to do in Nigeria? Well, we, I think what God has done with me here is that God has uh, used uh, in a microscope, microscopic manner, God has used my experience in the Ukraine to teach me on what I need to do on a larger scale back in Africa. Because uh, here, for example, we've been able to help rehabilitate and restore to the society uh, over 40, 42,000 really uh, alcoholics and drug addicts and their relatives that were not just, they don't just stop drinking or mm. doing that, but they become successful people involved in different right. areas of life and, uh, you know, contributing back constructively to the society. Right. And um, uh, that has been an experience that has helped. But when we go to Nigeria, we're not going to have too many drug addicts or right. things or alcoholics. It's not it's going to be different. We already have Christians who just need to be given direction. Right. So we want to be able to train them on how to get involved in, um, in transforming every aspect of the society as right. an individual. But that is the skill that God has given to me. And that is the knowledge and that is the experience that uh, the 30 years of my life in the former Soviet Union here has taught me. Now I can bring that to bearing in Nigeria and help Nigerian people not just to practice their faith in the four walls of the church, mm -hmm. but to also be able to bring that their faith into the economy, into the political sphere of life, into the media, into the technology, science and technology, medicine, uh, family, and uh, every other sphere of the economy and social life. Well, one of the things I heard you uh, say in one of your interviews or talks is about, and I think there's a principle here that applies more than just the action, is about people in Nigeria pirating your books and breaking the copyright. <laughs> so your approach was totally different, but there's a principle in the way you're approaching that problem. Yeah, it's because, um, you know, when you hear that people pirate or people do bad things, mm -hmm. uh, like pirating my books, they're actually stealing from me. Yeah. So they're making money, stealing my intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at that, I say, okay, um, that money that they're stealing from me, does it make any, does it really make any difference for me? No, I don't care. I just need the word to go out. And I see that they are stealing it, but they're still spreading the word. Right. So I could gain, we could make this into a win-win. So why don't I just reach out to them? So what I've done is that I'm going to, I've done that, but I'm going to even do that more. I'm going to reach out to all the pirates and going to give them comfort that they should not worry about being arrested or anything. And that, you know, you know I have done things wrong. And, you know, I know that that does not define me. It is evil. I mean, it is dangerous when we begin to define people by their failures yeah. and by their sins or their weaknesses so even though these people are stealing my intellectual property if i say they are only thieves mm -hmm. and there is nothing good in them at least i see them walking hard mm -hmm. even though they are working hard stealing mm -hmm. but they are spreading the world so why can't i just reach out to them with mercy and forgiveness so i've decided to forgive all the pirates pirating my books and stealing my books so you're, the approach you're taking is very very christ-like you know, um, he's not just seeing the thief or the adulterer. As yeah. everyone else is saying, stone this person, kill this person. Yeah. You know, this person is a thief, this person is gay, this person is... You're seeing something different. Yeah. And, and you're taking... Uh, uh, you're, you're, you're seeing the good in them. A lot of those guys that were called criminals here, mm. that were called alcoholics and drug addicts, mm. they've turned out to be politicians, <laughs> oh, wow. businessmen, successful, yeah. mm. just because I've refused to stigmatize them. And I've refused to say, this is who you are in totality. You know, if somebody that is, let's say, uh, a gay person right now, that is horrible. We don't, we don't approve that lifestyle. We think it's a sinful lifestyle. We don't support it. But I still see that I stop calling gay people gay people because mm -hmm. I think it's offensive. If I am doing something wrong right now, let's say, uh, and then you begin to call, uh, identify me and call me and brand me or name me by what I do wrong, mm -hmm. 
to you know if we try to uh just just say he's just gay that's the only that, i mean <laughs> you name him the gay you You're pushing that person away yeah, yeah you 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 remove all the other qualities mm -hmm. all the other good things that might be present in him you removing it mm -hmm. that same person might be the best student in his class mm -hmm. that same person might be a, the best worker in his company that the same person might be a job giver a job mm -hmm. provider but you have stigmatized him mm -hmm. and when we name a man just by his weakness we, we should not identify people with, by their failures and by their weaknesses we should not use that to uh, to give them identity you know i know what i'm talking about and i know i'm getting people that were down and out that were outcast that were regarded as nothing and nothing good will ever come out of them and i see good things coming out of them i see them becoming better than the good ones so i'm <laughs> going to stick my neck to it well wow. yeah so all those pirates and uh, other people you know, I just want to understand them, where they are coming from, and reach out to them. And I think love wins at the end of the day, because Jesus says you should not overcome evil with evil, because if you try to use evil, uh, evil, I mean, if, you know, like, okay, we're going to condemn you, we're going to uh, put you in prison, we're going to uh, charge you, you are bad. You are, so to use evil to try to amend evil, it doesn't work. It only multiplies evil. But if you want to really overcome evil, you must find love, kindness. So only love can overcome evil. Only good can overcome evil. That's okay. the approach I try to use. Now, one of the things that you're uh, looking to do is empower people uh, economically and the nation economically. What are your plans in that area? I want to, my dream before I leave this earth is to help release and deliver 40 million people from abject poverty. Let me just ask you this question first. What is the, can, what's the situation in Nigeria with poverty? Is this, is it's very bad. Okay. The average uh, standard, the poverty level in Nigeria is $2 a day. Well, okay. That's very bad. And you know, so most people in Nigeria, maybe 50% of the people will be living on $2 a, a day. Maybe more than 2%, I mean 50% of the country. So it's really bad. So it's like, like in India where you'll have... Uh, the rich and the extremely poor. Yeah, so you'll have the, the most expensive house in the world here yeah. and next to that will be yeah. poverty. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what we have okay. in Nigeria. Okay, so you were saying about some of the things you're going to do to tackle... Yeah, so the, the, the way I plan to uh, approach poverty uh, alleviation in Nigeria is to empower people who are most vulnerable, right. especially women, okay. uneducated people, youth that are unemployed, that are graduates. So I want to start a very widespread uh, microfinance mm -hmm. kind of uh, outreach, okay. you know, a popular microfinancing outreach that will empower and give out smaller loans mm -hmm to people who are most vulnerable. So to men and women and who are not educated or they are not skillful, but they want to do something with their life. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two thing that we want to do, we want to go to every local government, every local uh, structure in Nigeria, like every province, mm -hmm. and empower people agriculturally. Mm -hmm. We want to empower the men and the local people and the youth to start something on the ground to do something with agriculture mm -hmm. that's number two number three i want to start uh technical colleges mm -hmm. uh there are a lot of nigerians who are very ambitious but not all of them could get to uh, tertiary institutions like university they on the highest level mm -hmm. but they are just somewhere missing so we want to really popularize technical uh yeah the technical colleges where they could learn trade and skills mm -hmm. so um so yeah, that is, I want to be able to build a lot of those kind of technical colleges all over uh, the country right. and use that so that they will be able to do things with their hands and be able to also make a living for themselves. Okay. So that is a few of the things that we are planning to do. And I eventually want to also start a movement of um, 
no, helping people. I, I'm, I, I'm writing a book right now, Why You Must Never Look for a Job. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to stop the mindset that has been sold to us from the West mm -hmm. that you must look for a job, that you are going to get education to get a job. Mm -hmm. I want to really reverse that in my country. I want to uh, educate people and uh, change the mindset of people from looking for job into creating job. I want people to know that they are the greatest um, investment, they are the greatest resource that need to be invested in, they need to invest in themselves mm -hmm. and that their skills and their, their aspirations, their potentials, mm -hmm their abilities are worth developing and those are the things that will become products right. that will be marketed and give them everything they need. Nigerians are really very ambitious and they are very passionate people and so I think they have enough in them that they should develop rather than going to market and sell themselves uh, to some unconcerned system of got, trying to get uh, monthly salary or something like that. So I really want to, I want to release that book and I, I think that is going to really help change the mindset because right now what we have in Nigeria is that we have all these graduates coming out of, you know, colleges and universities looking for jobs and they don't have jobs because they've not been, cre they've not been taught to create jobs for themselves. Mm -hmm. And we want to reverse that so that instead of 99% of the people looking for jobs, mm -hmm. we will turn it down to at least just maybe uh, seventy-five percent are doing things for themselves. Maybe only about twenty-five percent looking for a job, needing to look for a job. That's what. That's one of my goals. Okay, so you were invited to the Clinton Foundation uh, a number of years ago. Why was that? Yeah, because um, uh, Bill Clinton said he's heard about me and uh, of the work I was doing in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So he said he was encouraged by that, even though he was also aware of some of the negative bad stories. That, mm -hmm. but he knows. He said, being the president, mm -hmm. he knows exactly how communism works and <laughs> how KGB and mm -hmm. how your name could be. But he said, for a black man mm -hmm. to go to a different culture mm -hmm. from Africa, and not just Western culture where it's already a popular site to see people from Africa or other right. cultures, you know, competing equally mm -hmm. on equal mm -hmm. grounds. Mm -hmm. He said, but when you go to a place where they are not used to seeing someone like you, mm -hmm. and when, where you are not so well, welcomed or not mm -hmm. even welcomed at all right. and uh, then you need to uh, pave the way f I mean for yourself and try to really and and then to be able to um, you know impose your yourself and your visibility upon the whole nation mm -hmm. on the level of the country that you are the kind of person that the world needs to hear okay so basically if you if you can do it here yeah. in Ukraine it's going to be much easier for you to do it to now. do it yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay so you're, very, you're going there very confident the absolutely. and trying to repeat or even do more. Yeah, because I have the, I have the formula okay. and I have the, you know, the algorithm mm -hmm. and uh, also the experience. Uh, you know, wh what I've come to understand is that the 30 years I've been living here, I've been living here for 30 years, it's unbelievable. The 30 years that I've been living here is like going to school. It's more like my preparation. So you did this without the experience? Without the experience, yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> so that? So now you're going with Now the with the experience oh, and oh, with the potential, I mean, with the resources as well. So okay. I'm, I'm going with like with, just from here, with yeah. two, over 200 people from, coming yeah. with me from Russia here. But then with another 2,000 people from all over the world, from England, from America, from you know, all over the world. But you came here without any. Without any, <laughs> just by myself. <laughs> just and by myself. Okay. Yeah, no experience, Single no man, potential, just with. one person, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be much more easy. And then I have more resources now. I yes. have, you know, material, human, all kinds of resources that will help me to be able right. to hit the road running okay. when I get to Africa. Well. I want to reach out to every local government and plant a clinic, put a clinic there. Another thing I want to do is to go to every local government and award scholarship to students from Muslims, Christians, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. to everybody. And I want to take um, community outreach to even Muslim communities and build hospitals for them, build, find out if they need a mosque and build a mosque for them, build, uh, you know, just to bring harmony, understanding, and more peace and peaceful coexistence among our people. So, uh, and this uh, microfinance is going to be for the Muslims as well as for the Christians. So it's going to, so I want to really be able to do things that will not just be, 
one thing and that's one of the reasons why things have not worked uh, in a lot of places in nigeria okay. not just one organization that's trying to serve the country i want to go into every local the very local place and offer them to you know to sh you know do some things for them that they need in that their locality not minding where they they live or what religion they have and things like that right okay very interesting that you say about helping to build mosques yes. some people find that very controversial <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, i think a lot of christians that might be one of the challenges i might face with a lot of christians thinking that how could you talk of building mosque for being a pastor how could you build mosque well if we want to live in one country if we want to live in a country that is um, where we are going to respect and uh, love each other i think that we need to do some very radical acts of love mm. and to the other side mm. and let them be convinced about the fact that our religion is not just a religion of peace but it's a religion of love and we don't just talk about it when we say christianity is a is a faith of love that we demonstrate it. I really want us to demonstrate Christianity to these people, to the Muslims in Nigeria, not by preaching to them and trying to convert them the way we have done in the past. What Christians have done in the past is just trying to go to convert them, and that way we try to love them by converting them. But what about doing it the opposite? What about going to meet their needs, to find out what they need, including building mosques for them mm -hmm. and building hospitals for them, building schools for them. I think we will be better received mm -hmm. if they see that we are not coming to bring division to their community mm -hmm. and we are not coming to enforce them to believe the way we believe, mm -hmm. but we actually honor them and their mm -hmm. faith as mm -hmm. well. I think when we do that, it will, be, it, it will give them a better understanding to know that we are the same people. Mm -hmm. And just like we, we want them to be happy as well. Just like we want ourselves to be happy. We, want, uh, we wish ourselves well. We wish them well as well. Mm -hmm. So I think by acting that out right. in practical sense, mm -hmm. it's more, it will be much more easier to convey the Christian message to them. That's what I think many Christians, I'm, I'm bracing myself to a lot of questions and uh, maybe even uh, opposition from my Christian brethren for doing this. But, um, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of convinced this has to be done. Kind of convinced this has to be done. Just like the same thing, people ask me, how do you intend to deal with the problem of uh, armed robbery and security in Nigeria. And I said, what I plan to do is to go on television and say, if you are a young man or woman there that is involved in armed robbery, I want to give you, in the name of God and in the name of our organization, an amnesty program. Um, I want to appeal to every armed robber in the line and I want to I sign a contract and I will show them the paper. I have a contract with the police that they will not arrest any one of you that will come here to meet with me between this period. This whole week, we're having an amnesty program. All of you could come, as many, I get a stadium or a, you know, a f f f uh, facility that will be able to take as many people as possible. As long as you come here, what do you need? Why do you do arm robbery? Is it not just to get, to get money? You want to get money? Okay, what about if I offer you money without arm robbery? Because when you do armed robbery, you put yourself to risk. You risk your own life, but also you risk the life of many other people that you know you are robbing. That might you know it might get violent and dirty. So why do you need to rob to get if you are, if your goal is to get money? Let's give you money. Let's give you skills and other ways and avenues of making money without going through the risk. Let's. Let's remove the risk fast factor, but that is not just the argument. My argument is this. I know exactly what you feel. If you become an arm robber, I want you to know that everybody is saying that you are bad. Everybody is saying that you are evil because you are an arm robber. But let me tell you what. I was as bad as you. I was as bad as you, and somebody had mercy on me. I was forgiven. I was given a chance. And... I want you to know that I'm not going to call you a robber. I'm not going to call you a criminal. 
I know that some situation must have forced you into that. And if we will reach out to you and try to let you know that we understand because when you come out of, your, of college and you don't have a job, when you need to feed your family, when you see your mates riding cars and living in, in luxury and you don't have anything, maybe you are forced into it. And if that is the situation and you really want to, you know, you know give yourself a better chance of life, you know, I want to offer you that contract and I'm guaranteeing you that nothing will happen to you if you will come here. We have this contract, and if anything happens to you, I'm responsible. So I want just to reach out to you, just like somebody gave me that chance. I know what it means to have nothing. I know what it means to be forced to compromise your conscience and to compromise your faith. So I just want to say, I see you that originally everybody was created good by God. Originally everybody is good. Nobody was born evil. Nobody is born an armor robber. You are not born an armor robber. Let's, let's, let's open a new page. Let's start afresh. Let's do something uh, to, to, to change your situation. And I'm guaranteeing you, I've done it before in, in Ukraine. In Ukraine here, we have 10,000 people who are, who are former drug addicts, former alcoholics. And these drug addicts, they were petty thieves and rob and robbers as well. And we have restored them back to the society. I've done it before. And I'm going to get a few people to come out with stories and say that I was one. I, I'm from Ukraine, I'm from Nigeria, to, to say that we used to be armed robbers. God gave us this chance, and so all of you. So I'm going to say we are going to send some of you abroad. We are going to give some of you training here. We are going to just help you get back on your feet and become a normal person. That is possible. So that's what I want to do mm -hmm. to try to bring back the stem mm -hmm. of criminality and armed robbery. Uh, there is a young Nigerian right now that is making dolls and is running Barbie out of town. Okay. Right. So why don't we support, so I would like to sub, get that kind of man, guy and say, why do you just make that, everybody now wants to buy their his own uh, you know, dolls mm -hmm. because they look more like Africans mm -hmm. and they are darker and they, are, you know, they wear the African traditional dresses and things like that. Unlike Barbie, that's just American, white American baby. Mm -hmm. And so why don't we use that and turn it into a transnational, uh, multinational company, an international brand? So I want to get someone like that, mm -hmm. put investment in him of how much, how much money he will need or help him attract as much money necessary to make that into an international brand. So, it's t so that way we have 50 countries in, Niger in Africa, over 50 countries and over 1 billion people. Then we have another 400 million people you know, living in other co continents who are black people. So let's build an international multinational corporation like that. So that is one thing I would like to do. But Nigeria has so much potential and especially the the energetic people of Nigeria, uh, intelligent people, and, um, and then the sheer number of people there. And so we, I think before I die, Nigeria could become in the top, uh, in the top 10 of countries of the world. But in the next 10 years, I think Nigeria will definitely be in the top 20 countries of the world. Especially if I go back to Nigeria, we are going to see Nigeria in the top 10, in the top 20 in the next 10 years. So um, undoubtedly the children are the future of Nigeria. So the young people today will be the people dominating the landscape in 10 years time. Uh, and often there's a miseducation of the masses and they're taught to uh, just fit into a system rather than be their gifted self. So are you planning in any way to influence the education system in Nigeria? Yep. Um I'm really very particular about that because uh, right now 50% mm -hmm. of the Nigerian population is between the age of 14 and 25. Okay. So young people, yeah. millennials as like they say. And uh, so these people now uh, have been, they have an uncertain future. Right. And the future they have is thinking of get, getting education and um, and getting a job, right. but that belongs to the past. Right. Uh, I want to uh, be able to create a system whereby people will know that education is no more 
what it used to be. Education doesn't guarantee you uh, a happy or secured future anymore. The only kind of thing that guarantees you a secured future is um, self-development, right. self-education, self-development, and uh, acquisition, individual acquisition of skills. So um, that is what I think that we need to emphasize right now to the youth of Nigeria, right. that they should emphasize personal development that will lead to creativity and the release of individuals' hidden potentials. Okay, let's talk about healthcare. Um, so obviously, medical healthcare facilities in Nigeria. Is there anything you're looking to do to improve that um, situation? No doubt, no doubt. Uh, uh, healthcare is a big thing in Nigeria. We have most of our most of the doctors that were trained by the nation mm -hmm. are actually not residing in the country right now. Mm -hmm. Most of them have left the country for okay. greener pastures. So most of our Doctors and nurses are overseas somewhere, uh, you know, trying to survive. So people uh, have put survival above national interest, and you can't blame them uh, because you know they cannot stay in the country because the country cannot, uh, you know, adequately reward them. So uh, what we want to do is to try for to first of all get in touch with Nigerians in diaspora and try to uh, come up uh, with uh, constructive ideas from them yeah. and hear them out and hear what they w would like to do, uh, what they think that must be put in place for them to come back. Yeah. I already, I'm already working with some group of doctors uh, in, mm, with, of Nigerian descent in diaspora. So they have their, some of their ideas on how we could entice our professionals back into the country. Mm -hmm. And then, besides that, uh, we are also having a plan of building a clinic in every single local government area in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But apart from general clinic that is just going to um, help people, you know, treat people's sicknesses, I also, I personally have a dream of having um, a diagnostic center in uh, almost every region of the country right. so that uh, people will be well diagnosed and they could be the diagnostics diagnostics that they are giving to people will not be uh, with errors and mistakes that mm -hmm. lead to death but they will have more uh, sophisticated and uh, you know medical uh, technology and equipment that will be able to prevent a lot of death so that's another thing that i'm looking at doing what would you say to the millions who have left Nigeria and gone outside. What is your message to them? Uh, there are two messages to them. For, to the Nigerians in diaspora, I will say some of you who are tired of just being sojourners in other people's lands and you want to contribute, you want to begin to you know, do something positive for your people, join our team. Maybe you are concerned and worried about resources, how to take care of your family back at home, how to take care of your children who are in school and colleges here, or maybe you are concerned about your income, how it's going to drop, or your standard of living when, if you go to Africa. Well, we can talk about that, and you, don't, you will not have to worry about that. At least, uh, we will try our best that, to make sure that your standard of living and your income does not come lower than what you have right now, where, whatever country you're living in. That's number one. Number two, I also want to talk to those Nigerians who are doubters, who, are, who don't really believe what I'm saying and think that this guy is just off his mind. Good. Uh, I would like to say you have the right to that doubt and you should doubt. You don't have to believe me because there's been so many promises and you know things have not worked out. So I'm not going to tell you to believe me. You don't need to believe me. Just stand outside and watch. But when it happens, I would like to congratulate you as well. <laughs> um, you mentioned about having the TV programs. In oh the yes, media. we're going to uh, have all kinds of TV programs. I'm going to go to, the, to Nigerian film industry, Nollywood, mm -hmm. and I'm going to introduce myself to them and I'm going to ask the top directors 
and actors to gather together. And I want to have a meeting with it about the thousand of them, the top producers. Mm -hmm. And I want to sign a contract with them. I want to sign a contract of uh, mutual agreement with them, mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. And we are going to train them and we are going to exchange ideas so that with them. I'm going to bring people and we are going to train them how we should use media to execute this agenda of changing the value system of our country. And I'm going to tell them that entertainment is not enough and that if they will partner with me, anything they need, I, we are going to be able to agree with them. If they need some financial partnership or if they need some sponsorship, if they need some help from my side, we're going to give them that help. That, but for the, na for the sake of the nation and for the sake of building a new country in our generation, I'm going to challenge them that we should put value system above all things and we should declare war against vices in our country, against every evil negative thing that Nigeria has been known for. And there is nothing that can do that more than the media, film industry, you know, and all the movies and things like that. So I'm going to meet with them. Then I'm going to have another meeting with Nigerian entertainment world. Nigerian entertainment and music industry has been growing, you know, exponentially. And I'm going to meet with the top 100 of the stars, of the uh, music stars. And I'm going to reach a, an agreement and a mutual understanding with them as well. And we're going to come with a contract also that through music, that they should begin to produce music that is not, you know, propagating all the naked women and abusive of nature of women and all kind of, you know, just those kind of uh, black American kind of entertainment that they have begin to copy, you know, and we'll begin to train them and I will agree to them for them to just listen to me and to, for a week and go to come through the training and any one of them that will agree, I will beg them for the next sake of raising up a new generation of people so that we will remove devices and we will still do the beat, we will still do, but we will bring new content, content that are not just entertaining, but content that are going to build, content that that are going to form. So people are being entertained, but at the same time, they are being formed. They are being debuted. They are being uh, constructed to be a nation of virtues and a virtuous nation and a virtue. But and this, these are instruments. So music is going to be an instrument and a vehicle to build a new nation. Uh, movie industry, entertainment industry will be a, become a vehicle of building, not just of getting people to have fun, but also of building integrity, building, building values, building principles that will all be geared towards one goal of constructing a new nation and building up a virtuous na people. Okay. I'm going to go and give scholarship to 1,000 Africans. I'm going to go into every African country. I'm going to give five to ten scholarship to you know, from five to ten people, scholarship to five to ten top people, the top minds between the age of uh, 20 to 40. Having met Sunday and spoken to him, I realized that this man is actually either insane or he's genuine and he can do what he says he's going to do. And I've seen that he has the character, he has the qualities, he has the skill, he has the historical evidence that he's capable of doing what he wants to do in Nigeria. And he's inviting people from all around the world to join him, either short term or long term, to relocate to Nigeria, short term or long term, to be a part of history. And this is your opportunity to be a part of history. So if you want to take part in what he's doing in Nigeria, you want to support in any way, you have some skills, you have some talents, you have some abilities, and you will uh, have an expertise in some area, you can go to his website and you can make contact and apply to be able to be a part of what he's doing in Nigeria. So let me say again that I've spoken to him, I've asked him questions. Though his plans seem insane, he is more than capable to achieve what he's trying to achieve in Nigeria. He's put a lot of effort and time and detail in his strategy and his plan. So he's not just going there and then hoping for the, for the best. He's actually planned this to the last T, to the last dot on the I. Okay, so he's planned it well. And if you want to be a part of it, you can be a part of history. The African giant Nigeria is a nation clamoring for change. Having weathered countless storms and many challenges,
The desire for a Nigerian rebirth has become the cry of this nation rich in potential. Can the sleeping giant awaken as a dominating force on the global landscape? A new storm is brewing, one that challenges the corruption and deceit. A new generation of Nigerians believe that this is not the time to sit idly wishing for change. They are heeding the clarion call to awaken the spirit of nationalism and patriotism. A new day could be on the horizon. The clouds may be revealing rays of hope. We may be about to witness the blossoming of Nigeria. Выключите проект, вот он. Get ready, Nigeria. The Russians and Ukrainians are coming. What is the solution for Nigeria? In these revolutionary books, Sunday Adelaja details keys that could unlock Nigeria's potential, both at home and on the global landscape. Are you ready for new thinking? Be the change you want to see. And this book is, uh, is the beginning of my revolution for Nigerian society. New books by Sunday and Elijah are now available worldwide on Amazon.